Okay. Good night. Good evening. I pray every, everyone's day was blessed. So this evening as I'm here, I just want to say, let's bring a word from the book of Jonah. And um, we see so many things that is happening. So many things is taking place in this world. And a lot of times we question, we question God. We question God based on what we see that is happening and that what is taking place in this world. So, you just, I just want to tell you all to be encouraged. Don't focus on the nice, nice, nice and the chattering that you hear making, but focus on the word of God. And um, I will bring a word from the book of Jonah 3 and here it goes so Jonah rose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And verse 7, and he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not be feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way. Amen. And, the, and from the violence that is in their hands, who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. Here ends a portion of the Lord's word. So my 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 word this evening is we see this in the book of Jonah. God has, has sent um, Jonah to Nineveh. But Jonah decided to go his own way. Disobedient. And he went to a different place than where God was sending him. So we see here that after the, he went his separate way and the destruction that befall him, that they threw him overboard off the ship and he, and he went into the belly of the whale. We, he, we see where the God says in verse 3, And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go into Nineveh, that great city, and preach. So God was sending Jonah into Nineveh to, to warn these people, you know, preach to them and tell them that destruction will fall, um, befall them. He, he was sending known, um, Jonah here to warn them, but Jonah was saying these people are wicked and evil. He don't, he didn't um, think they deserve um, God. He didn't think they deserve to be saved, right? So Jonah was saying, I know that you, God, is a merciful and a forgiving God. He said, you are so merciful and you are so forgiving. If I go to Nineveh and warn them, you will forgive them of all the evil and the wickedness that they have done. But Jonah didn't want God to forgive them. Jonah didn't want God to have mercy on these people of Nineveh. And, I, and you see, a lot of times we, people of God, we fall in the, in the same 
category. Sometimes we don't feel people deserve God's mercy. Sometimes we don't feel people deserve God's love. You see, God is a merciful and a forgiving God. God sees our heart and God knows that he know whatever we are saying to him. He know if we are true, if we are saying it from a draining art or we are just doing it for show. So God see that the people of Nineveh had really, really repented of their evil and their wrongdoing, what they were doing. But Jonah said, no, God, if I go, you will still forgive them because you are too merciful. You will forgive them of their evil that they are doing. So Jonah went his separate way. And after the destruction take Jonah and they throw him overboard. God said, I am sending you to Nineveh the second time. So here is Jonah going to Nineveh, preaching the word of God and says, God say you shall repent from your evil doing. God is saying you shall if, repent from your, the wickedness that you are doing. They didn't, Jonah didn't want to do it in this time that he's doing it. He's hungry. He's bitter. But he have no choice the second um, second time but to bring God's word to the people. And so many times we, a lot of people, prophets, came and they prophesy. And they give God's word. They give God's word a um, warning. But we, the people, we are so stiff-necked and we are, our hearts are so hard that when these words come, we don't discern that if the word is coming from God, we started to criticize one time and say, no, I am not taking this word. This word is not from God. And these people, you could see that out in obedience to what Jonah was saying, you see that these people are repented. You see that's where the king, mighty God, you see that's where the king, the king, it does not matter what position that you are in. But sometimes some people think that they are in a high and mighty position that when God is saying to you government, when God is saying to you preacher, go to my people and tell your people to go on a 30 days fasting. Too many pride have taken you over that. You, you, you stay in your own little corner and you ain't going to your people and say, listen, God says we should go on a 30 days fasting and prayer. You're not going to the people and giving them the word that God sent by the mouth of the prophet for the land concerning this country. God said, if you don't turn, I will destroy. So Jonah went forth into Nineveh and Jonah bring the word that God wanted him to bring to the people. He said, destruction will befall you if you don't turn from your wicked way. He said, destruction will befall you if you don't stop the evil and the wickedness that you're doing and you see that the king had called for a, a, a fasting you say he clothed himself in sackcloth and ashes and he said Let neither man nor cattle nothing eat or drink nothing because we are going to fast he said we are going to pray for this 40 40 day that God will withdraw his hand from off of Nineveh he said, we are going into obedience, so God that will withdraw his hand from off of Nineveh. And so many times the word of God has been sent forth by the mouths of prophets. And because of people's disobedience, because of pride, because of pride, pride have taken over so many people. That they don't, don't, they, they don't focus on doing the things of God. They don't act in obedience to the word of the prophet. They don't act in obedience to the word that God has sent forth by the mouth of the prophet. God, he said, I will destroy this great city of Nineveh. So in order for me to save you from this evil that you are doing, you need to repent and turn from your evil, from your evil ways and the evil things that you are doing. So we see that Jonah went went forth and Jonah was preaching to these people and Jonah was saying to them, God say you shall repent. He said, if you don't repent, he said, I will destroy. And we see that in the book that, um, we see in the book where Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Remember, Abraham was pleading with these people. 
And they, they decided, he said, if God, if I find five, he said, would you save Sodom and Gomorrah? And God said, yes, if, if five you find down there, I will save them. But he said, these people were so wicked and evil that they did not even want to turn. So God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And we see here that now in the book, in, in the book of Jonah, that these people, they take heed to the word of God that went forth by the mouth of the prophet, that when um, Jonah delivered this word, Word. Not only holy people, you know, he said the king. And sometimes some people think them into so much high position that they can't even praise God. Sometimes people think them, them, them crown too big upon their head that they can't even go on their knees and pray, go in a fasting and pray and say, listen, yeah, we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our land because so many disasters is happening. So many destruction is taking place. And because out of pride, these people are disobedient and they turn their face from God. They turn themselves from the things that God is saying because of too many pride too many pride and so here is here is Jonah Jonah go and Jonah bring the word but Jonah was hungry he said when he see that um, God has really saved Nineveh it said Jonah was hungry because Jonah said these people did they did not deserve God forgiveness. He said these people they did not deserve God forgiveness. Jonah was hungry with God. He said these he said these Assyrians he said they are too wicked. He said they are wicked and even God should have never saved them. And we see also down in um Jonah 4 verses 11 and God says, "And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city?" Wherein are more than six thousand um, persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle. So simple God is saying, these people, they need forgiveness. God is saying, no matter who you are, no matter what you have done, he said, I will forgive you because I am a merciful and a forgiving God. Sometimes people think you don't deserve God's mercy. Sometimes people think you don't deserve God's forgiveness. But God can see our heart. And God knows if it's coming from a genuine place or it's just fake. So even if the, the, the whole um, country go in a fasting and prayer and they pray now to God... God is the one at the end of the day will determine, listen, if these people were really true, if these people were sincere in their praying, or if these people were just fake. So when God sent forth his word by the mouths of prophets, when they deliver these words, it's for us now to take heed to the word of God that came, by, um, came forth by the mouths of prophets and repent, turn from every even wicked deeds and wicked things that they are doing or that we are doing and turn to God and seek God's face for God to withdraw his hand from half our country of, our, 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 of this world. Once we seek the face of God and turn from the things that God is saying, we should turn from God. Will, he will take away his hand. You could imagine if God says, <laughs> if God, the word of God says, the cattles. Could you imagine? He said, even the cattles. Animal. If God is saving animal. If God is so true and sincere to this animal, much less me and you, we are human beings. Why you think God isn't merciful and forgiving to forgive us from our sins? To forgive us from everything that we are doing that is not pleasing in his sight but we have to come to a place where we saw Lord for Christ and say God I repent God have mercy on me until we reach at that place where we say God have mercy upon us because we as a people we as a nation we have sinned against you but people are full of pride that they cannot go before God and say this thing they are saying it but they are not saying it from a genuine heart and that's why we see so many wickedness is happening in this world people may profess with their mouth and say yes God I, 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 I forgive me 
but they're not true with what they're saying. They're only telling God to forgive them because they see that the destruction that is happening in this world and they want all this Christ to just go. So they want, like they think they can't fool God. Nobody can't fool God. Nobody can't fool God. We can't fool God. We only are fool ourselves. We cannot fool God. So we see here that Jonah never won God in because he said these people did not deserve for God to save them. And he know that God is a merciful and a forgiving God. And he said he know that God was going to forgive them from all the evil and the wickedness that they were doing. So Jonah was running. Jonah was running from delivering this word to Nineveh. And so a lot of times God sending us places as well. And we don't want to go. We tell God we're not ready yet. And if you see, God called Noah first. And in, in, in verse 1, he called Noah, him Jonah, and he said, he's sending her down to Nineveh. And in the second part, he didn't go. He go, have you one way and he do his own thing. And in verse 2, in ver he said, Jonah, verse 3, he said, I'm sending you down to Nineveh. And this is the time now he went. And he says the king and all that they accept the word that came forth by the mouth of the prophet. And they went down. And he went down to Nineveh. And bring the word that God had sent him to bring the first time. And God say, withdrew his hand from off Nineveh. And he saved that great city. Even though they were wicked and evil. He saved them because they came before him in repentance. They came before him and cried out to him. Cry out to God and said, God, forgive us. He, they cry out to God and say, God, have mercy upon us. We have sinned against you. Forgive us. Forgive us as a people. Forgive us for all we have done until we come to that place where we recognize our wrong. Until we come to that place that where we see that we have went wrong in the sight of God. Our land will not be ill. Until we come to that place where we cry out and ask God for mercy and forgiveness for our evil and our wrongdoing. God will not withdraw his hand from off our country or half this world. Until the people of God repent and turn to God and turn from their evil and their wicked ways and seek God wholeheartedly. God will not take his hand off. We have to come to that place just like these people of Nineveh. We have to come to that place where we ask God for mercy. We have to come to that place where we say, God, forgive us because we have sinned against you. And sometimes we have we, we fail to recognize that we have sinned. But the word of God says so we all have sinned. He said, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all sin, so don't be pointing fingers and looking at other people and say, oh, you, 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 you faulted. Well, at the same time, you're trying to pick beam from somebody else's eye. The beam is also in your eyes. All of us sin. All of us come short of the glory of God. All of us make wrong choices and, and wrong decisions. But God says he's merciful and he's forgiving. He said, we'll forgive you. He said, will forgive us. And God wants us to come to that place where we just repent. Just ask God for mercy. For mercy. We have too many, too many prophets going out and bringing the word of God into country, 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 all over this world. And sometimes I think our leaders... Sometimes I think our leaders, our government, they're full of too much pride that they cannot go and seek the face of God. Truly, all art they live for the country. Because we look, the Bible tells us that this king, this king here in Nineveh, he recognized 
that they have done wickedness and evil and he was telling them come he put on his sackcloth he was in ashes until we come to that place those in high position until you come to that place and realize that we you all have sinned against God leaders until you come to that place where you recognize that you have sinned against God your people have sinned against God we all have sinned against God until we come to that place God will not be able to heal our, our land Verse 7 of Jonah 3, it says, And he caused it to be proclaimed. Proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. And you see, he said, Earth nor cattle, he said, not feed nor drink water. And I, I think this is, this is why this part in verse 11, he said, where God said, And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city wherein are more than six score thousand? And when I look for six score thousand, I see 120,000. So this is saying this was the amount of people that was here in Nineveh that cannot discern. He said that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also cattle. So you, you see that the king was saying not even the cattle shouldn't be fed. Mm -hmm. Animals. Animals. God care about the animals. If God care about the animal, why God wouldn't care about us? And sometimes the ears, when people, sometimes some people face certain things in life, and you will hear them say some things like, "Oh, there's no God. We have COVID that is wreaking havoc in this world, and people are so angry at this present moment. People are so frustrated. A lot of them will say, "There's no God. If if there was a God, why uh, this world is facing so many things? Yes, there's a God." God care about the cattle. He care about you and me. But it, the problem that is happening in this world, people haven't come to the place of true repentance. People haven't come to the place that they would recognize that yes, God, you rule and you reign. Until people come to this place and recognize God and turn. The problem is, you know, we as a people, we are not turning. And you see, because we are not turning, this is so many disaster. Disaster after disaster because we are not turning. We have to turn. These people of Nineveh, they turn from the wickedness. The king went forth with a decree and he proclaimed it in the land. He said, this is what we are going to do for 40 days for God to take his hand off this great city of this great city of Nineveh even though they were wicked and evil they turned to God they repent they did not just repent they repent God see their hearts God see that it was coming from a genuine place they repent and they turn to God until we as a people until we as a nation until we turn to God and turn from these things that we are doing. God will not take his, God will not withdraw his hand. God take his hand off Nineveh. And if God take his hand off Nineveh, God will take his hand off this world and stop the disaster and the destruction that is happening. But we have to repent. We have to repent from a genuine place. Don't only speak it, but actually do it. We have to repent. Leaders in government, we have to repent. We have to repent from the evil and the wickedness that we are doing as a people and turn to God for God to withdraw his hand of the nation of this world 
the king made a decree in the land and said, listen, we are going to fast. We are going to pray. We are going to put on sackcloth and we are going to be in ashes for God to take his hand off Nineveh. What, what is happening in this world? Our leaders. It all, it don't only, it is not only for us people, Christians that is going to church. It's also for our leaders that is in government. That is what God is saying. He said this is also for our leaders that is in government. Don't just come and make a decree and tell your people them, say, go fast, go pray. But we see that the king here in Nineveh, he was fasting. He was praying also. He did not just hear the word of the prophet that came by the mouth of Jonah. He also was, he also was in the prayer and the fasting. And so many times we are calling um, on the people to pray. But what are we doing in our chambers? Kings and government, what are you doing in your chambers? Are you praying? Are you seeking the face of God? Are you fasting? Are you going to leave the fasting for us, the people? That you say going to church? Leaders in government, you all need to repent. Repent for your nation. Repent for your country. God is waiting on you to repent on behalf of your country. For him to take his hand off. Mighty God. You see, if we just read the word of God and see what God is saying, and God is speaking, God is speaking to us as a people, God is speaking to us as a nation. He said, the only way I will take my hands off, he said, unless you come to the place of true repentance. He said, the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, they did not, he said, they did not turn. He said, that is why I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, because they did not turn. But he said, the people of Nineveh, he said, they turn. He said, they come to a place of true repentance and seek my face. He said, so I saved that nation, of, that great city of Nineveh. You see so many things that is happening and taking place in this world. And it's for everybody. It's for everyone. It's for, it's for you and it's for me. So don't just come and tell people, oh, repent. And you're not repenting as well. You have to repent as well. It's for everyone. All of us. I pray God help us. I pray God help us in this time. And I pray God will open our eyes. So we can see. Where we have gone wrong. Where we can see. That God is not pleased. With the things that we are doing. I pray we come to that place of true repentance. I pray we come to that place of true repentance. Mighty God. God is calling on us as a nation to repent. Take repentance serious. Take repentance serious. God is calling on us as a nation and as a people to repent. Why you all take it lightly? God wants us to repent. God wants us to turn. He said the people of Nineveh, they repent. He said the people of Nineveh, they turn. And I heal their land. And God will not heal our land until we repent from a genuine place. From a true and a pure heart. He said, I am a merciful and a forgiving God. He said, I will forgive you of all your sins. He said, I will forgive you of all your wickedness that you have done. But you need to repent. He said, we need to repent. He said, all of us need to repent. Look, look at these things that we see that is happening in this world. And people take these things for a joke. It's serious things. Serious things are happening in this world. It's no joke. God wants us to turn. Not only to turn halfway, but turn full. He don't want us to turn and then we leave. Only broken space. He wants us to turn. 
And see that when we turn, you see that we all sold out for him. Good evening, Minister Lynn. God wants us to turn. People of God, turn. Turn to God. Just like how God saved Nineveh, God can save our nation as well. Be in obedience to things of God. Remove every pride. Because sometimes, most of the times, pride block us, pride stop us. Because we, we, we full of so much pride, we don't, go, we don't want to go on the, on the street to minister the word of God because we say people are going to see we. Because of pride, we don't want anyone to see us praying. Because of pride, we don't want anyone to see us worshiping God. Pride. That is what is messing up this world. Pride. Too much pride. Because of pride, people are afraid to cry out to God. Because of pride, people fear. <laughs> Mighty God. Because of pride, people are afraid to say, God, have mercy upon me. I, am, I have sinned. You know, some people don't recognize that they sin. Some people don't recognize that they sin. They will come to you from, from Monday to Sunday and tell you to repent and turn. But they will never recognize themselves that they have sinned. And God is also saying to them, repent. Some people don't want, no, don't want people to see them as telling God to forgive them. Because of pride. Because of pride, they become so boastful. That they think that they are holier than anything else. So, they don't want to ask God for forgiveness. We all have sin. That what the word of God says. He said we all have sin. We all have come short of the glory of God. Repent. Repent. Jonah said these people of Nineveh. They did, they, they, he know that God was going to forgive them. Because God is merciful. So because he know that he, he was running from bringing the word. Because Jonah was saying God you should destroy them. They don't deserve your forgiveness. Jonah was saying, God, destroy them. But God said, no, Jonah, go. Bring my word. But Jonah did not want God to save them. That, that is what is happening. Too many wickedness and evil is in the land. Too many wickedness and evil in the land. And God is saying, turn, my people. Repent, my people. How many times are we going to hear the word repent? Repent. Leaders in government, repent. Leaders in the churches, repent. We need to repent. All of us need to repent from our evil ways. From everything that we are doing that is not of God. That is it. We don't repent. Uh, minister Lane from a genuine heart. We don't, people don't repent from a genuine heart. And that was what I was saying. I said these people of Nineveh, even though they were wicked, even though they have done so many evil in the sight of God, they repent from a genuine heart that God could see that their, their repentance was true. You know, that God could see that they repent. God could see their heart that they repent from a place that he say, yes, I have to save these people. They repent from a genuine heart. And sometimes we as a people are repenting, but we are not repenting from a, from a genuine heart. You know how we repent? We repent based on because we see a destruction that is happening right now. And how we are saying, God, me I repent, God does, does take away the destruction. And when God removes the destruction or the crisis, then go back to them evil and the wickedness that, we do, that they were doing. It's only for the moment. Some people repent only for the moment. Only because of what they see. That is kind of hindrance and a little blockage. I'm going to stop. The, 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 the flow I'm going to stop them from getting two, two dollars. So they say, you know God. But it's not from a genuine heart. It's not from a genuine heart. Too many evil and wickedness. <laughs> is in the land. And God is saying that we as a people, 
we must come to a place of repentance just like the, 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 the people of Nineveh that they repent before God. They repented from a true and a genuine heart and God saved this land of Nineveh. And that is what God is saying. <laughs> I pray God have mercy upon us all. I pray God have mercy. God have mercy upon us as a nation. God have mercy upon, uh, upon us as a people. Help us to turn, God. Forgive us. Forgive me, God. Because we have sinned against you. We have sinned, oh God. Forgive us and have mercy. Remove every, every form of pride. Remove pride. The Bible tells us about Nebuchadnezzar. Too many pride. That Nebuchadnezzar worship everything that he had. Nebuchadnezzar worship everything that he had. He did not give, he did not even acknowledge that these things that he had came from God. He think everything that he had come from his own strength or his own power. And God has to humble him. And if we don't come to that place of removing pride and repenting, God will humble us. God will humble us. And God is saying to all of us, God is saying all of us, none of us is exempt. He say, call on the king. The king heard the word that went forth by the mouth of Jonah. And he called, he proclaimed a decree. He said, he proclaimed a decree in all the land. And he tell these people, repent, put on your sackcloth, ashes. And they were, he said, neither the cattle. He said, don't let them eat, don't let them drink. Don't let them do anything that would hinder God from withdrawing his hand from all of us. And God is saying to the leaders, to our leaders, God is saying to our leaders in government, call, proclaim a decree throughout your land and go on a serious fasting and prayer. No joke thing, no petty thing, but a serious fasting and prayer. He said, for me, God to withdraw my hand from half your country, from half this nation. He said, you have to repent, go in fasting and prayer and seek my face from a genuine heart. And he said, I will know if, he's, if it is, he is God, so you will know it if, if it is genuine or it's just a fake repentance. But from a genuine art. We have so failed God. So true minister Lane. We have failed God. It's, it's so sad. We have failed God. None of us. He said none of us is exempt. All of us included. We have failed God. Because we won't want to acquire all this wealth and all these things. We have failed God. We have failed God. I pray God have mercy upon us. I pray y'all be straightened. And don't focus too much on this noise that you see happening in the world that we forget about God and forget about the things of God. But be straightened in the Lord. Be encouraged. Trust God. Seek the face of God. And turn. Not just halfway, but full. Turn. So God can take his hand off this land. He said too many evil. He said too many wickedness is in the land. And God wants us to repent. All of us. So I thank you all tonight for joining and for listening to the word of God. And I was reading from the book of Jonah 3. And be strong, be strengthened. And as all you as you all go, 
I pray the blessings of God upon you all. I pray the blessings of God upon your family, upon your household, upon your children. I pray that we'll repent and seek the face of God. I pray we all will come to repentance. Because if my people, which are called by my name, should humble themselves, he want us as a people to humble ourselves and seek his face and turn from the evil and the wickedness that we are doing. God is saying we should repent so he could heal our land. Be strengthened. Be strengthening the Lord and strengthening the things that is of God. A blessed and a bless and a peaceful night as you go. Thank you all. I bless you all for joining and for listening to the things or to the word of God that I was ministering. Be strengthened. Don't focus too much on the noise. But focus on God and on the things that is of God. I pray God cover your children. And as you all go tonight, I pray God give you sweet sleep. Everything that came to take your sleep as you sleep in the night. I pray God uproot it from your life. I pray God give you peace of mind as you sleep tonight. As you sleep tonight, you will keep focus on God. And not on the things that is of this world. Because he said, my kingdom is not of this world. He said, don't focus on the system of this world. He said, don't focus on the things that is of this world. But God is saying, focus on me, God. Focus on God. Be strengthened. Be encouraged. Peace and love. As you go, God, go with you all. Have a blessed night. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate, appreciate you all for joining and for listening to the word of God that I bring forth. God bless you all. Peace and love.